today I am in Cairo, Egypt. First time in Egypt, always wanted to come here since I was a kid. I've been all around the world and my 80th country turned out to be Egypt. So I'm at a place called Canel Kaleli, which is like a big marketplace. It's open till like midnight, it's about 8 o'clock now, half 8. I'm with an uh, organised tour, which is Intrepid Travel Tour again. Worked out really well in Peru, so I thought I'd give it a go here, see how it goes. I'm optimistic, I think it'll be good. So I'm going to get to see a lot of Egypt over the next week. Starting off in Cairo, we'll get to see a lot more of Cairo tomorrow. Um, today is just kind of this at the moment. Um, as much as I wanted to get some souvenirs, God, it is chaotic here. Much as I wanted to get some souvenirs, I don't think this is the best place. I think a lot of it is cheap and tacky stuff. And I think there'll be other places where I can get some genuine, authentic souvenirs. So I've got to leave my tour group for a little bit. There's seven of us all together. So I've left my tour group to go and explore a little bit. And I've got to meet up with them in about 30 minutes. But that should, get, that should give me time to do a little bit of exploring. When I discovered when I discovered there wasn't really anything I'd buy here because the souvenirs are a bit too cheapy, there was only one reason I wanted to come here and that's for a really nice photo spot. So I found the photo spot, but it was so busy trying to get photos taken. I had a couple of people try and take photos of me. Um, I had loads of photos taken, but it was so busy. I don't know if any of them have come out well or not, but I guess I'll find out afterwards. The Great Pyramid of Khufu. The only remaining ancient wonder of the original ancient seven wonders of the world. The only one that you can still see. And I'm about to go inside, which could be a little bit uncomfortable because I think it's quite small, but I think I'll be in there for 10 minutes, if that. But it is quite magnificent and amazing just to see it in real life. I'm just entering the Great Pyramid now. It's actually quite well lit. I thought it might be darker than this. And it's not too cramped yet, but I think as I go along, I'm gonna to have to duck down as I make my way through. A little bit out of breath, because I tried to get through there as quick as possible. It was literally a minute, if that, in the cramped bit, but there's still a long way to go up but it's not cramped. There's lots of room above me. So I've made it all the way down there. Up to here where there's lots of graffiti. I don't think this is anything that's ancient. And there's another bit to go through now. Well, again, I have to dump there. So I think it was a bit overpriced to go inside the Great Pyramid, but it was still really cool. There wasn't a lot to see inside, I'll be honest. Didn't take too long to get up the really cramped bit, less than a minute I'd say. Going back down it got busy, so it took a good few minutes, maybe five minutes in the cramped area to get out and it was getting quite hot in there. On a busy day I can imagine it being very uncomfortable, hot and sweaty. But yeah, I, I think I'm glad I did it, definitely, because it's the only chance I would get to do something like that again, go inside the only remaining ancient wonder of the world. But I was hoping there'd be a little bit more inside than there was. So they offer camel rides and horse rides here, and originally it was included in our trip, but because of the way that the animals are treated here, which you can tell camels and horses are not treated well. I've been on a camel before in the Sahara, and I was a little bit unsure about that, but they were definitely better treated than the camels I've seen walking around here. So I'm glad that is no longer included in the trip. So I have to be quick because we're going to board the bus. I've got a very quick glimpse of the second pyramid. We're not going to get up close to it. I always used to think this was the Great Pyramid because of the bit at the top, but it's not. This is a slightly smaller one. It actually looks like the pyramid with the bit on the top is bigger, but it's not. The Great Pyramid of Khufu is still there. It just looks bigger. The other one looks bigger from here. 
Great Pyramid looks a bit smaller from here. So what's quite interesting is that the Egyptians used to live on the east side of the Nile. We we're on the west side. They'd make their homes out of mud bricks. And over here, they would use much better stone because they wanted to make sure the tombs that housed them in their eternal afterlife would always survive. And so they have after thousands and thousands of years. But also, they built them here on the West Bank because they worship the sun god Ra. And obviously, at the end of the day, the sun sets, so it goes from east to west. So they believe that the sun god Ra died every day and was reborn in the morning. So they believe this is where the afterlife was, which is why they built all the pyramids on the west bank of the Nile. And this is the Great Sphinx of Giza, which not the best view, well, it's a good view from here. It's probably not picking up too well on the GoPro, but we will get closer. I hope we're gonna get closer to it. But I'd actually say the Sphinx always fascinated me a lot more than the pyramids when I was a kid. So it is quite a cool thing to be able to finally see. So we're walking towards the Sphinx. So this stone, all this quality stone and all the stonework here is over 4,000 years old and it's still in amazing condition just because it's, it's granite and just the fact it's such good quality. And it's amazing to think that over 4,000 years ago this was all built like this. This is the closest I can get to the Sphinx. It doesn't look too busy, does it? As soon as you turn around here, it's crowded with people trying to get photos. But it is quite a sight. It is. It may not look that big, but it is pretty big. But we just use the white board, this one, to make the paper, and we cut it into small slices like this. But as you can see, the white board is breakable. It's so easy to break it because it contains the amount of fiber, so it's not flexible. When you try to roll it, it will break. So how we can make it more flexible? We use the hammer to break all of the fibers. Then the rolling bin to squeeze it, to make it more flat and to get the water outside of it, as you can see. Then we soak it in the water for six days in the water to get the white paper like done at the top for six days. <coughs> Excuse me. 12 days you're gonna get the brown paper like the one behind me. So six days you'll get the white, 12 days to get the brown. And even more days in the water it will become more dark, you know. Dental, vertical, horizontal, vertical to make the whole sheet of paper. Like weaving it. Then we cover it and we put it under the press machine for another six days. So after six days under the press machine, the spices will stick together by the sugar without any chemical materials. So we don't add anything. But the ancient Egyptian people didn't have any press machines. So can you guess what did they use? Stones. Stones, yes. So, so I asked like an, another uh, group, what did they use? Some of them said like camels. <laughs> Camels for six days. Six days under the press, you will have the first paper in the history. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, feel it and pass it, please. We visited what was the Papyrus Museum, but it wasn't really a museum, it was more of just like a, a gift shop or art gallery where you can buy all the pieces. And some there were some amazing pieces of art there, beautiful. I bought a piece. Managed to get him down to 75 pounds, which was a lot more than I was expecting to spend. But it is genuine, it's a proper piece of artwork, so I think it was a good purchase. And it's something that I can stick on my wall. So I'm now at the Egyptian Museum, we're gonna explore here. And it should be quite interesting. Some places we can take photos, some we cannot. But there should be lots of different treasures that have been taken from various tombs around Egypt. I actually visited the British Museum a week ago just to have a bit of an idea of some of the things I might see here because there's lots of Egyptian treasures there and different statues and all sorts. So what is actually here is very similar to what the British Museum has. There's just a lot more of it. But the only thing missing that should really be here is the Rosetta Stone, which the British Museum have, but they have no intention of returning it back here. 
but the Rosetta Stone is definitely interesting to see and I'm glad I've seen it in a British Museum. So this is the only statue they found of the great king that the Great Pyramid was built by. And it's like seven centimetres tall, tiny. So I've just been in the treasury room of Tutankhamun and it was amazing. No video or photos allowed inside. So I've seen like coffins and sarcophaguses and mummies in the British Museum. This doesn't compare. The, the, the mask, the, the cot, there was like two sarcophaguses, like one would go inside the other, both were covered in gold. Then you had the gold mask. It was, it was amazing. So much more amazing than what I've seen in the British Museum or elsewhere. I just wish I could have taken photos. But sometimes it's nice just to look at something and try and remember it. Quite a busy day today. Seeing everything Cairo that I plan to see really. We are going to come back here at the very end of the trip, but I won't have a lot of time here. So we're now at Cairo train station and we're gonna to head to Aswan, which is a 13-hour train journey. So we're sleeping overnight, we've got cabins. Hopefully they're okay. I am pretty tired, so I should sleep for a lot of it, which will be good. Um yeah, yeah, it's it's been good today. I would definitely say seeing the pyramids, the Sphinx, amazing, actually really, really cool. So glad that I managed to do that. Egyptian Museum was okay, it wasn't brilliant, however, the Tutankhamun Treasury, brilliant, absolutely amazing. So it's worth going to the museum just for that. So just got into the cabin, bed's up. The bottom bed's not up yet, the chairs are still there. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to be given some sort of meal, probably like a, a plain meal. It's actually a lot smaller in here than I thought it was going to be. It's, it's not awful, but there's not a lot of space. Um, there's a sink and a mirror, so that's all good. Toilets outside somewhere, there's two toilets per car. There's some sort of coffee place where you can sit down, so I might do that. I mean, it's a 13 hour trip. I'll be sleeping for at least eight hours if I can. Um, it's nine o'clock now. We're gonna probably depart soon. I don't even know where to put my luggage. So I'm sure I can find somewhere to try and put it. But who knows? Anyway, this will be an experience. So we get given food on here. So it's like aeroplane food. So there are some fries, some kind of meat, chicken and something, and some rice. It looks okay, I'll be honest. I'm glad I had the pizza earlier because this would not be enough to keep me full up. 